And we want to welcome you back. And we have a very special guest right now, Carrie Magro, living with autism, and he's a motivational speaker and a graduate student at Seton Hall University for Strategic Communication and Leadership. And we want to thank you so much for joining us. Um, you're, you're truly an inspiration. Now tell us that you are now, not only are you um, a motivational speaker, but you're also a graduate student. You've overcome so many obstacles. Tell us how you've done this. Uh, honestly, it was just a lot of hard work. Um, I usually tell my parents that I really couldn't have done it without them. I think the two biggest teachers in my life have been my parents. And uh, through a lot of trial and error, through a lot of treatments, through a lot of different services, they were able to give me the best life possible just by being there and just trying to make sure that I lived the best life I could possible. And now I'm in grad school. I'm in my second year at St. Hall, so I'm excited. And Winston Churchill once said, when you're going through tough times, just keep going. Yeah. What motivated you to keep going when you were go facing some obstacles and, and really struggling? What, what made you reach down deep and keep going? I think it was definitely a few of my keen interests. Uh, growing up, I was always a big fan of basketball. Uh, my, uh, I've always been a big fan of the Lakers and uh, <laughs> played, played basketball in high school. And I think from just playing basketball in high school, I learned so many different things about how to self-motivate myself, how to work for something that I never thought would be possible. Because with autism, I did have a lot of motor skills, uh, difficulties growing up. And it was just amazing for me to have these opportunities and to have basketball in my life to really pursue me to where I am today. <laughs> we'll have to talk about uh, the championships after this, but tell me about what student life was like on campus. Uh, student life was phenomenal. Um, it's a little bit of a party from here, <laughs> from now and then, but uh, I just enjoyed it. It was such a vibrant community, and one of the biggest things I think I've always struggled with is communication, but there were so many people out there who were very accepting of who I was as an individual, didn't look at autism as anything of a disability. As you mentioned, they, they were just looking at my abilities and my strengths. And it was just a great, a very learning environment. And I just love, just love the community, love my friends. Now, autism, uh, we didn't really hear much about autism maybe 10, 20 years ago. But now it's on the rise in almost epidemic proportions. What have you been hearing about why we're seeing such a rise? Honestly, it's really because a lot of people are just becoming more aware of what autism is as a society. Social media is a big part of that, but also we're just becoming very much more aware of what autism is. I was diagnosed 20 years ago. I was diagnosed in 1992. And back then, autism was every one in 500 at one in 1,000. And today, the Center for Disease Control is saying one in 88 individuals wow. are diagnosed with autism. So autism is becoming an epidemic, but I also feel like we have so many awareness efforts going that parents are just understanding that we need to get uh, people diagnosed much uh, sooner. And is this what led you to become an advocate? I've always tried to be a self-advocate in my life and try to help the future Carrie Magros um, in the world who are dealing with autism, try to really be there for them in their lives and that's really I think why I became a self-advocate to just be there for them and just hope for a better day for not only my life but but for them as well. Now in addition to everything else I understand that you're also writing a book so talk to me about that. <laughs> yes I've been writing a book for uh, quite a few years now uh, based on my college experience. I uh, started in my freshman year and uh, now I'm hoping to get the manuscript done as I uh, graduate from grad school uh, this December. Wow, so, so graduate school, you're going to be completely done uh, this December, you said? Yes, wow. then I'll be a full-time adult. <laughs> that is complete, that's amazing. Um, now, you also said that you were, you were diagnosed at age four. Tell, tell me what it was like growing up with autism. Uh, there was definitely a lot of different little things that um, made my childhood uh, interesting. Um, <laughs> Some of my difficulties ranged from uh, motor skill uh, deficiencies uh, to really just the whole communication and social interaction thing. Um, I was nonverbal until two and a half years old. So communication was always something I knew I had to strive for. But at the same time, I also had a lot of therapies growing up. My parents were able to get me diagnosed at a rather early age. So I was able to get into early intervention and to get the treatments possible to get me where to uh, where I am today. And Carrie, you've been such an inspiration. We have one last question for you. What yeah. would you like to leave with the, the viewers with? What message do you want to leave us with? I think if I could leave the 
the viewers with anything is that you just strive for a better day for you and your loved ones always. But also remember that regardless if you have a disability, regardless of the differences in your life, you there are so many unique individuals. One thing to say about the autism spectrum is if you meet one person with autism, you've only met one person with autism because autism is such a wide range. And that's really just with any individual. And honestly, just embrace the unique uniqueness and just embrace who you are as an individual and you'll live a very fulfilling life. A wonderful message for everyone. Carrie Magro, you have been truly an inspiration. We thank you thank for coming you. to Ebert TV. Thank I'm you so much. So glad to be here.